Those people who will not be governed by God will be ruled by tyrants. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Samuel Adams, First Chief Justice John Jay, men who felt a divine call in their lives, a call to freedom, a call to sacrifice for the benefit of their fellow man, men that held such a deep belief in the Almighty God that they were willing to be found guilty of high treason against their government for the sole purpose of forming a country based on him, his principles, and the freedom to worship. The Declaration of Independence begins and ends with these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. This conviction of duty and honor for God and country was not limited to the founders of our federal government only. It extended into the states as well. Without exception, all 50 states acknowledged the Almighty God in the preambles of their individual constitutions. We the people of the state of Alabama in order to We the people of Alaska grateful to God and to those We the people of the state of Arizona grateful to Almighty God for our liberties do ordain this constitution. We the people of California grateful to Almighty God for our freedom in order to secure its blessings do establish this constitution. We the people of Colorado with profound reverence for the supreme ruler of the universe. The rights of worshiping and serving their creator according to the dictates of their conscience. Grateful to almighty God for our freedom. We the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, grateful to almighty God for the civil. The founding fathers of our federal and state governments were people deeply devoted to service of God, service to country, service to their fellow man. The same spirit of duty, sacrifice, and honor that existed in our Founding Fathers has not vanished. It is still alive and well today, especially within our modern-day Guardians of Freedom. I was drafted in 1968 to the U.S. Army. The Vietnam War was in its peak. Uh, when I was drafted, a lot of people went to Canada and didn't want to go. When I was drafted, there was no hesitation. My country called me. The thought of not going never entered my mind. The thought of not coming back entered my mind, but that was a sacrifice that I accepted. Uh, I got to Vietnam Tet Offensive 1968, which was the worst of the war. I went through the Tet Offensive 1969, which was almost as bad before I came home. I went in Vietnam from my platoon with 17 other guys. Through the 11 months and 15 days that I was in Vietnam, 14 of them perished. Six of them the first time out in the field. I lost a good buddy in a tunnel three weeks before we got our papers to come home. The horrors of war are horrible, but it, it 
sacrifices have to be made. It has to be done in certain instances. I, I was spit on when I got home. After I landed back in Oakland and I was spit on, I, I took my uniform off and put my civilian clothes on to come home. And I wasn't recognized. I don't even think I was thanked. And I lost my father-in-law five or six years ago. And a few months, it was a Memorial Day after his death, my sister-in-law called me and thanked me for my service to my country. And that was the first time since I got back in Vietnam that I was actually thanked for the service I did. Well, I want to thank you. You're welcome. I'm a crew chief on a helicopter gunship, and our whole job is to keep the guys on the ground safe. Uh, the times that I have seen stuff, you hear guys, the guys on the ground come across the radio and they're scared. You can hear the fear in their voice. And we go and we put ourselves in between them and the enemy fire without thinking. I've never once thought about it until it was over, you know, <laughs> saying, what in the world did I just do? Uh, and I believe that's part of being a Christian too. It's just like it says in Isaiah, who's gonna go for us and who will I send? And here am I, send me. That's what I've always done. I've always tried to do that. All right, so we headed out early, uh, early in the morning uh, from Conakin, heading towards Bald Rouge. It's probably about a, a three, two and a half to three hour drive at least, uh, patrolling along. Um, we're actually, you know, uh, securing a supply convoy uh, going over that way. Um, probably about halfway uh, through the through the route. There was a bridge. Uh, after the bridge, there was a hill. Afterwards, it kind of went up and around to the right. Um, and as the lead truck came on the bridge, uh, there was a large explosion. Um, it almost flipped the flipped the truck completely over. It came back down on its wheels, uh, and the truck uh, went around off to the right of the road. Um, um, the rest of the convoy kind of passed by. Uh, the truck and pulled off next to it. Um, we started uh, receiving a, a, a lot of small arms type type fire and stuff, um, which ended ended relatively quickly. Uh, it didn't last a, a real long time. Um, the uh, the gunner uh, on the lead truck, PFC Wyatt, was it was very obvious that, that he is KIA, um, probably instantaneously on on the explosion. Um, he took several large pieces of, uh, of shrapnel to the head and to the neck, um, and he actually was, was uh, flown from the, from the vehicle. Um, so we, uh, we obviously uh, you know, gathered him uh, and, and started uh, medevac, medevac procedures to, to, get him, uh, to get him safe, and uh, we had uh, uh, maybe maybe a 20, 20 minute wait, uh, not even maybe maybe 15 minutes actually, uh, and and the area was secured, um, and uh, you know uh, Wyatt is uh, I, I think about him every day because I didn't know him that well, you know what I mean? Just kind of talked to him in the past. You know, Nineteen years old, man. Was married three weeks before we left to his wife, and uh, you know he, was, he had the whole rest of his uh, whole rest of his life ahead of him, and and he gave his life for for our country, and. Uh, in an incredible, incredible way. I think about him and I think about his wife every day. I get, I get to come home uh, to my family every day and, and she's, she's still living her life uh, without him, just like many other uh, wives and, and children of, of men and, and other women who have given their life for this country uh, in its defense. Um, and uh, 
I don't, I don't think that uh, enough can be said about that, about their sacrifice and, and what they do. Um, and that's, that's about it.